off rep, superstars, media. My Biafran people, how are you doing today? This is Biafra Superstars Media and I'm holding it down. I say God bless Biafra and God bless Odudua. God bless His Excellency Mazenam the Kano. God bless Chief Sunday Igboho and all the freedom fighters. From the southeast to the southwest up to the middle belt. And our house of brothers, if you're ready for your freedom, if you're ready to regain the land that was stolen from you by the Fulani Cabal, then God bless you too. God bless His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic Government in Exile. His Excellency, ESN, Ekpa, Simon and Jocko, for the great job you're doing. My brother, we thank you, we appreciate you, we love you. Because um, the African Renaissance have started. We all say that Biafra will be a shining beacon to the whole world. And Africa will follow our lead. They will skip to our loo. When they see what we are doing, when they see the freedom that Biafra is fighting for, Africa will follow. And so far, you have seen what is happening in Gabon. You've seen what, what happened in Mali, Burkina Faso, and just last month, Niger Republic. My people, today, I want to speak to our neighbors in terms of africa i'm talking about europe i want to speak to our european neighbors because we share this world together this thing called it we share the earth together so to me africa has their own continent europe are our distant neighbors because they are just next to african continent so i'm going to be humble in this one and I will tag this discussion. The Gabon coup, a strong message to France and Europe. Africa has finally woken up. My people, you see, when you go on social media right now, the discussion about Gabon seizing power from their so-called presidency, a family who have held power for more than 50 years. And suddenly I'm seeing people saying, oh, you Africans, all you do is cool. Europeans, people who I respect, who I think they are more ed educated to understand what is going on in Africa. But somehow there is a saying that a, an evil king can be a loving father. A wicked king can be a loving father. You see, most of our people that we know in Europe, the Europeans, our friends, that live in Europe, you know, they somehow don't understand the foreign policy or policies of their government. They don't understand the dynamism, the dynamic approach. How in one phase, your government can be doing good things internally, locally within your country. But their foreign policy in African countries especially those ones they have colonized the policies they put out there can kill can make a human being an african to commit suicide or to see the best option in life to run into the red sea in order to make it to europe my people today i want to speak to all our so-called friends in europe that claim they understand what we are going through. They say they support Africa. They say through you, um, the Red Cross, through the UNICEF, they support us with aid, with support, financial support. Give $2 a day to a child in Africa. Today, I want to tell you to keep your $2 to yourself. Because we Africans, we are not poor. In fact, it's an insult for you to be donating $2 a month or a day to a child in Africa. Because the oil, the gold, the resources of the world, they come from Africa. Two thirds of the resources of this earth comes from Africa. That you are able to use your cell phone, your smartphone, 
your laptops, your touchscreen laptops, the resources, they come from Africa. Africa is not a poor continent. Because I'm seeing mixed, you know, information from the media. People are saying, oh, you Africans, all you do is do cool all the time, you know, and all those things. And I'm telling you today that it is because of what countries like France, Britain, Portugal, Belgium, to name a few, the havoc they cost in Africa is the reason why Africa is in a mess right now. The mayhem, the indirect rule, the colon, oh my God, the colonization of Africa. You all claim that slavery started in the, during the transatlantic slavery from, you know, the, from Africa to Americas. No, no, no. There was slavery in Africa before the so-called transatlantic slavery. Because you came, you enslaved us. We were not slaved. We, we were enslaved. There is a difference from being a slave and being enslaved. Enslavement means people came and they put you in bondage. You were free, living your life. But a foreigner came. Foreigners came from a different land and they came to your land. They overpowered you. You fought like a man. But they, the force they had, the machineries they had, they used it to overpower you. From the advent of the gunpowder, they were able to come to Africa to overpower you. And they enslaved you. This was before the transatlantic slavery. In your history, they tell you, oh, there was slavery in USA, in America, in England, and all those things. But in Africa, what we had was colonization. I want to tell you today that that history is false. In fact, it's a fallacious statement to say slavery did not occur in Africa because we know from what we are seeing now, from the indirect rule that we are seeing now, how countries like Britain, France, Belgium, you all know the story about King Leopold, what he did in Congo. Until this day, they are still doing it. So for the fact that they have henchmen, stooges that they put in place as presidents, as head of states in African countries, that tells you that till this day, these European countries still have a firm grip in Africa. But Mama Africa has woken up because as you can see what is happening all across West Africa. Yes, right now it is the time for France, but very soon, <laughs> Nigeria will be next. So Britain, get ready because Nigeria will be next. Britain, I say, get ready. The revolution has started. Africa has finally woken up because the days of you putting henchmen as our so-called president, people that have no ideology that they bow down to all what you've told them to do. You rule them indirectly. You rule the, in fact, you steal the resources through these so-called henchmen. You make them and their children and the family to be rich. You send their children abroad in your countries on scholarship. But the main people that need the resources, they don't have access to it. So today, I, I want to say thank you to Gabon. I want to say thank you to Niger Republic. I want to say kudos to Mali and Burkina Faso because this, this new trend is what we needed in this sine qua non to the freedom of Africa. The engine of freedom needed Gabon to do what they did last night we all heard about it this morning but the days of slavery is gone because i keep asking myself europeans cannot spend a week in this harsh economic climate of africa what your government what your french government in do is doing in africa if you as a white person is living in Africa, if you were somebody from Gabon, Niger Republic, you cannot survive for a week under the harsh climate, the harsh economic policies 
that those people have to go through. Because in Africa, there is nothing like a benefit system. Food stamps that you have in the Western world, we don't have it. And the only reason why you have a benefit system, the only reason why you have food stamps in Europe, in America, and the rest of them is because of the wealth of the nation. When you steal excess from Africa, your government is now able to afford to give you food stamps. Benefits. You lose your job, there is a free house for you to stay. The government is paying 70% of your salary. You know? In France, in Germany, you name it. All across Europe is happening. But in Africa, you will not get such because the policy in Africa, you know, does not warrant it because the wealth of the nation is being siphoned. Look at Nigeria, for example. The oil coming out from Nigeria belongs to the Biafran people. The crude oil coming out of Nigeria belongs to the Biafran people. Now, if the beer friends are allowed to manage and control their oil, to tell the outputs what is going out of the Biafran land, of the oil, then the people of Biafra would have been living like the sheikhs in Saudi Arabia. Because when you talk about the oil from Biafra, the quality of the oil, the crude oil, is second to that of Biafra. I mean, of South of Saudi Arabia. But what Britain has done in the case of Nigeria is Britain, because of the greed, they have come in and they said they wanted the oil of Biafra for cheap. They don't want to pay the market price. So what they did was they asked the Fulani to step in. They told the Fulani, they planted the seed of discord. They planned with the, in fact, they connived with the Fulani cabal. The Fulani tribe of, you know, some strangers, some, some drifters all across the Sahel of West Africa. They brought them in and they told them they were born to rule Nigeria. That the creation of Nigeria was meant for the Fulanis. So all the resources must be controlled by the Fulanis. So what you see in Nigeria today is a situation where the Biafran oil is not controlled by the Biafrans. The Fulani Cabal, they're in partnership with Britain. And the multinational oil, co oil companies from Britain can come into Nigeria and take those oil for free, technically. There is no transparency. There is no accountability of how this oil is being used or managed. And before you know it, there is oil theft. The same people in government, they steal the crude oil and they sell to the Western world. This is why the people of Biafra, they have no say. They are no longer stakeholders. Europeans, I want you all to understand what is happening in the land of Biafra. You think we are one people. You say Nigeria, we are one nation, but we are not. Britain made it so. Britain came and in 1914, they amalgamated a people, a different people, total strangers. They brought them together as one nation. That will never work. Even in a relationship, when you bring a man and a strange girl to be husband and wife, it will never work. Until this day, the Biafrans, we've been asking for our freedom from that zoo we called Nigeria, but Britain is still working with the Fulanis to make sure Nigeria remains one because of their selfish interest. So when you look at countries like Gabon, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, their own story is different because they were all colonized by France. And the French were a bit more harsh in their policy. They came up with the policy of assimilation. And they told the blacks, the Africans colonized by France that they were all French citizens. 
<laughs> wow. And somehow they were able to convince them. Some flew down to France, living as second class or third class citizens, but they still saw themselves as French citizens. But the conundrum in that situation now is that because you say you are a French citizen, it means all the resources in those African countries belongs to France because you are a citizen of France. So the government of France can control the resources from those African countries. Which is why in the case of Niger, we just found out that uranium, in fact, Niger has a very high deposit of uranium and France has been controlling the uranium resources from Niger all these years. And the two thirds of light being powered in France with uranium from Niger while the people of Niger were living in absolute darkness. In fact, Nigeria was the one giving out electricity to the people of Niger. While the resources from Niger was creating and generating electricity in France, all in the name of the policy of assimilation. My people, the world is waking up and Africa has, has finally woken up. Because what is happening in Gabon today is the final straw that will break the back of the African freedom because this freedom must come. This freedom from this, our so-called colonial masters must come. And to our European brothers and sisters, our neighbors who keep saying, how come these Africans, they kill themselves in the, in the ocean trying to come to Europe. I'm going to assure you that once Africa is free, we don't have to come to your countries anymore. Because we love our climate condition, the warm environment in Africa is enough. The resource that we have in Africa, if we manage it for ourselves, we're going to be as rich. In fact, we're going to be the richest continent, which we already are in theory. But in reality, because you are the ones controlling our resources, it makes it to appear as if Africa is the poorest continent in the world. But through this freedom, through this new alliance of Africa, the moment we break away from our colonial masters, I can assure you that Africa will become the darling of the world. It's coming, my people. And we say to Nigeria, get ready. Because we, the Biafrans, we are ready for our freedom. We have nothing in common with any other tribe in nigeria we as a nation we are demanding the freedom and i believe that through our minister our prime minister mazi simonek but this freedom is assured you can do what you want to do you, you you can hold our 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 leader our supreme leader Oyendo Mazenam the Kano. Hold him as much as you like, but that will never stop this tornado running across African continent. Biafra must be free. People of Niger must be free. Gabon must be free. Mali and Burkina Faso must be free. So, my people, today I just wanted to speak on this. As we see what is unfolding before our eyes in Gabon, I will only pray for the people of Gabon to stay strong. Your freedom is coming. Your liberation is coming because all these so-called stooges, they've placed in your government to manage the resources for France. It has finally come to an end. One family, 50 years, controlling Gabon. One family. For 50 years, they were in power. They were the CEO. The chief executive officers carrying and looting the resource of Gabon and sending it to their slave masters, France. So for all you laughing at Africans, all you, you, you know, people saying, oh, you Africans and this and that, 
you laugh at us but i want to assure you when we are free two things will happen you see that oil you get for free you will have to pay the real price the real value for that oil and some of you might not be able to even afford a cup of coffee because we're going to place the price, the real value of the price of the cocoa bean, the cocoa used to make your coffee. The coffee bean used to make your coffee and the cocoa used to make your chocolate. We, the Africans, will place the price. Because it makes no sense that we are the owner of these resources, these plants, and all these cash crops, but somehow we cannot afford to even buy a chocolate. <laughs> we cannot afford a cup of Starbucks because the price is, I mean, you are looking at $5 for a cup of coffee. $5 in that zoo called Nigeria is about 5,000 Naira. I mean, that's about 20% of the paycheck of somebody who is on minimum wage in Nigeria. But when we start controlling the resources, when we start controlling the value of the coffee bean, and we place the value out there, we become the manufacturers of coffee and chocolate, then we are the ones to put the price. You might even be lucky in Europe because we'll, we will be fair with our price. In economics, that's what we call the fair price policy. Let's be fair. We buy, we have the resources, we make those products. You can come and buy for free. All you need to do is pay us, not pay Holland, not paying Denmark, not paying France, Germany for chocolates. When the cocoa bean comes from Africa, those days are gone. If Saudi Arabia can control their oil and live like kings and queens in this world on earth, we the Biafrans must be allowed to control our oil resources so that we can enjoy the benefits as those from Saudi, from Kuwait, Dubai, UAE, and the rest of them, the way they are enjoying the benefit that God has blessed them with. Look at Saudi, they only have oil, and they are living the best of life. You respect them, you go down there for your Hajj, you pray to your God in Saudi Arabia, but in Biafra land, we control, the, we have the oil, behind my backyard the oil runs behind my backyard and i can't even have a job in an oil company we can't even have a job in an oil company we don't even have access to the oil wells we don't even control the oil wells this part the oil is coming and running through our backyard my people those days are gone biafra is coming the freedom is here Africa has finally woken up. Africa is finally taking their destiny in their hands. Mama Africa is now calling us. Please, my people, do not, do not fail us this time. All the saboteurs, we are telling you now, take your hands off. Do not blackmail your people the way you did it back in the days. All the CIA informants, the FBI informants, do not blackmail your people again. Because what you did in the 60s has set Africa back a hundred years. So this new, move, this new movement, this new renaissance of Africa, of putting Africa first, is something we all must embrace. Because the shame is too much. The embarrassment of being a black man and you're watching on TV in the Western world, they are showing your brothers and sisters in the high sea, in the oceans, they are drowning, they are clinging on to a lifeboat, in a life jacket trying to make it into Europe. All because their government have failed them. I feel shame. I, I, in fact, I feel baffled. I feel worried in my spirit. When I see Africans, 
our African brothers and sisters trying to make it into Europe when there is nothing in Europe. Apart from the snow, there is nothing in Europe for you. Except you want to go to Europe to enjoy the weather. <laughs> snow, winter. There is nothing in Europe that should make an African leave their amazing continent and die in the Red Sea in the process of making it into Europe. They only do that because they have been left in the dilemma between the devil and the blue sea. When you are by yourself, the government doesn't take care of you. If you don't have a job, you're on your own. You cannot feed yourself. If you are jobless, it means your family will stay hungry until they die because the government is not responsible for the people. There is no democracy in Africa. Because those you call your so-called presidents, as in the case of Nigeria, I saw what the youths did in Nigeria. They voted for a particular candidate who spoke their language. But suddenly, you saw what happened. How somebody who is a drug dealer, somebody is in his 80s, somebody you, you, you don't even know how he made his wealth you, you don't really know his date of birth he was imposed by the western world as the president of that zoo called nigeria and so far you you can see what is happening there which is why we are saying i will never feel ashamed of my african brothers and sisters because i know that deep inside no european can can live for a week if placed in the same condition being met by our african brothers nobody in europe can live for a week in that condition and be alive i rest my case on that one i rest my case because um it is time for us to put africa first and I am glad that the people of Mali, Burkina Faso, Gabon, Niger, and Biafra. My fellow Biafran people, finally, as I wrap this one up, I want to call upon you. My fellow Biafran people, please, please, I beg of you. Your own case is special. It is unique because you find yourself in a country that they claim to be one nation, but there is no oneness in that country called Nigeria. A place where all the resources come from your backyard, but you are in control of none. A place where when you try to rise up to fight, it is your own politicians that will kill you because they are already billionaires. They've been made billionaires by the system. A place where those who should be your so-called neighbors, they hate you. They kill you, they betray you. And when you say you want to leave, they are the same people that will come as military to kill you. My fellow Biafrans, it is time for us to wake up. What is happening across Africa is not a, by mistake. It is time for us to support the movement. We must support Mazen Namdekano for what he's doing, for opening our eyes to this Biafra movement. We must support the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic government in exile, Mazi Simon Ekbar, His Excellency, for the awareness, for the great job he's doing. We must not be left by ourselves. While the other African countries, they are getting their freedom. We must not remain in Nigeria because we have no business with Nigeria. Nigeria is a failed project. Nigeria is not a nation. And Nigeria must let Biafra go. So my people of Biafra, the handwriting is now on the wall. The handwriting is on the wall. If those in Gabon can do it, 
if those in Niger Republic can do it, if the people of Mali, Burkina Faso, could do it, what is stopping us? What is stopping us? What is stopping us? I rest my case. So from me, from here for now, I'm going to say peace to the whole family. Biafra Superstars Media, I'm holding it down. I say God bless Biafra and God bless Odudua. God bless His Excellency Mazen Namdekano. God bless Chief Sunday Igboho and all the freedom fighters. From the southeast to the southwest, up to the middle belt. And our house, our brothers, if you're ready for your freedom, if you're ready for your liberation, if you are ready to regain the land that was stolen from you by the Fulani Cabal, then God bless you too. My people, before I go, I want you to hear for yourself what the world media is saying about a coup. They call it a coup in Gabon. I call it a revolution. They call it a coup in Gabon. So listen to the way the media are breaking it down. And I'll come back to wrap it up. Listen. Army officers have appeared on national television in Gabon claiming they've taken power. Gabon, a former French colony, is located on the west coast of Central Africa. The army officers said they were annulling the results of Saturday's election that had returned President Ali Bongo to power. Gunfire has been reported in the capital Libreville. The group behind what appears to be a coup says the borders are currently closed and they also claim to have the support of the armed forces. This comes after the Electoral Commission said President Bongo had won just under two-thirds of the votes in an election the opposition argued was fraudulent. Concerns over delays in the returning the election results led to an internet shutdown and a nighttime curfew by the government that was still in place as of Monday. Mr Bongo came to power when his father Omar died in 2009. If he has been overthrown, it would end his family's 53-year hold on power in Gabon. Well, let's get 53 year hold of power in Gabon. One family doing the bid of France. A 53 year hold of power in Gabon. One family doing the bid of France. He was the CEO <laughs> of Gabon for 53 years. Let's continue. We're live now to Will Ross in Nairobi. Will, there are lots of claims being made there, but how much do we know about what is actually happening on the ground? Well, as you say, there has been some gunfire in the capital, Libreville, which suggests it's not kind of a, a done and dusted coup that was quick and finished. But uh, there was this extraordinary appearance on, on state TV, this video with about uh, 12 members of the armed forces. They've now said they've set up the Committee for the Transition and Restoration of Institutions, which is a the kind of title that military men give to themselves when they've seized power. Um, they seem to be from a fairly broad range of the armed forces, which might suggest this military action has broad support within the armed forces, but not clear if it's over yet. We don't know where President Ali Bongo is at the moment. As you said in the introduction, he'd only just been declared the winner of this election, which the opposition and observers have really d d dismissed as a bit of a sham. Um, the President Ali Bongo was given uh, over 60%, 64% of the votes. The opposition man, Albert Ondo Ossa, got 30%, but he was only chosen as the candidate just over a week before the polls opened. Um, the rules of the election had changed, the ballot papers, the way the voting was done was changed very late on. But perhaps these military men who have seized power, perhaps they've just had enough of the Bongo family that have been in power since 1967. First Boom! Since 1967. Wow. What a coincidence. The same year the Biafran was started. The election last minute coming with some new 
ways of doing things, some new rules, some new policies on how to carry out the election, some new guidance. And the military, they got tired of that family. Oh Lord, my God, have mercy. Africa is waking up. Let's continue. Well, Omar Bongo for over four decades. He then dies and Ali Bongo steps into his place. Um, and even back in 2018, when the president, Ali Bongo, had a stroke, he was completely out of action and wasn't seen for um, over nine months, I think 10 months in total, but uh, didn't step down and then came back to power. And then there's been this um, disputed election and previous elections have also been disputed, resulting in protests by the opposition and uh, protesters being gunned down. Um, but we have to wait and see whether this is a, a, a completed coup or whether it's still kind of in progress and whether there will be any resistance from other elements of the armed forces. Well, yes, well, that was uh, that brings me on to the next point, which is what can we expect might happen next? Because, uh, as we said earlier, there was an Internet shutdown that was put in place and a nighttime curfew as well. What is the situation likely to develop into? Well, yes, that internet shutdown makes it very difficult for us to get uh, through to people in Gabon. But I mean, if it if it sticks, this coup, they've already said they've shut the borders. Um, then presumably we'll find out where President Bongo is being held. But I suppose for the wider uh, African continent, you know, this is coming hot on the heels of the the coup in Niger, which is still causing, you know, a lot of political turbulence. The African Union will be perhaps not completely surprised by this because it just seems that there's this pattern in Western Central Africa across the Sahel countries okay. before this one in, uh, in Gabon, where disgruntled military officers seem to just think that they can seize power um, and um, lock up the president and then do as they please. What tends to happen after that is the African Union or other regional bodies um, issue a lot of criticism, perhaps even suspend that country, but then negotiations start for when there'll be a return to civilian rule. But we'll see if this coup... Well, sir, with all due respect, you know, um, those days are gone. <laughs> those days are gone because right now, what you're seeing is a new revolution. The days of just saying, oh, a new power comes in. No, we are saying we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. I don't see why Africa that has all the resources should be languishing in abject poverty. Those days are gone. Africa has finally woken up. So from me, from here, for now, I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I remain Piafra Superstars Media. And finally, I say to the Gabon Coupist, we understand you. We know why you're doing what you're doing. And this is a message to France and Europe. Africa has finally woken up. Thank you and God bless. Bye-bye. Superstars Media Freedom's gonna come Yeah Yeah Freedom's gonna come I'm fighting for Biafra Fighting for Odudua Yeah, yeah Freedom's gonna come And I'm the Kano He's the leader Yeah We fight for liberation Of the people Of the nation Yeah, yeah Freedom's gonna come Freedom's gonna come Ooh.